Hello everybody, welcome back to the rain time. Um, it's been a while since I played this game, but we're back. I know I'm, I was supposed to play, play this yesterday, but you know what? I don't care. I'm a great YouTuber. Anyways, where we last left off, um, I also said that I accidentally deleted my save. Well, you know what I did? I just pl I just skipped through all the text. Um, you know, I mean, going through it again, I, d I didn't want to read what I, I had already read. So I just skipped through the text, and that was completely, that was so fun. So, we last left off, we left off here, I think. Um, or it was really close to here, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, and I already kind of forgot. Uh, Bren, Bren, Brainick is a small hub situated, situated in the corner of a residential block. Okay? Despite its central location, it is largely ignored by the shopping public. The patrons consist mainly of residents of the upper floors and students. Okay? You're quite the poser. <laughs> oh my god, Bernard. You're quite the poser with your red wine. I say to Bernard. Okay, well that was me talking. You're quite the poser with your red wine. I say to Bernard. I say to him. Yeah, he is quite the poser. He guffaws. <laughs> I drink the head off my first glass of beer. Okay? So, so what brings you to town anyway? He asked me. You, you're usually in bed around this time of day. I don't know. I had some library books to return, I reply. Oh, yeah. Remember the Russian guy? The Russian guy. Um, good for you. They're about to... They're about to raise the overdue fees again. I don't know who's talking. I heard the faculty struggling with the persistence hole in their budget. He adds, they're trying to patch it over with the backs of lazy students. I, for one, say, no taxation without representation. Okay. Say, while well, I'm at it, Okay, same. While I'm at it, Bernard continues, are you busy next month? See, the thing, the problem with this game is that it's not like Undertale, where the character's face is next to their, te their text, so I can easily tell who's talking. This one, I just have to assume, and then the text tells me later. Okay. How so, I reply. Well, as you know, we were rehearsing something by Isben recently with my drama group. We're still looking for someone to play a porter. Would that be something for you? A porter? I don't even know what that is. Bernard's always busy with that little trip of his. Last summer, they performed King Lear for a 12-headed audience. Okay. Well, come on, man. It'll be fun. Don't you want to keep the arts alive? You know, maybe. I don't know. I don't know, I reply. <laughs> I probably won't show up for the rehearsals. I'm not, punctu I'm not punctual lately. Got a lot in my mind. I forgot what punctual means. I'm pretty sure it means, like, like... Patient? No, <laughs> that's not what it means at all, but I just forgot what it means. I know that it was in Aladdin. It's okay, you won't have to practice. You only have one word in the whole play. Oh, that's good. His insistence is starting to bother me. His face is, has always bothered me. It's not going to work out, Bernard. I'll fuck things up. I don't want to put in effort. Okay, that was me talking. Bernard seems like he's about to retort. Retort is the ugliest word I've ever heard. You'll do fine without me, I. You'll do fine without me, I add. Everyone does. You can ask Matt to do it, if the part's really that easy. Who's Matt? Oh yeah, I think Matt's the chubby one, right? Sixpence. Bernard calls out, Sixpence. That's all you have to say. There, you've learnt the role by heart. Sixpence. I don't know why that's important. No, Bernard, I hesitate. Or, you know what? I'll sleep on it. What does that mean? Bernard looks satisfied. I think sleep on it means that you'll think about it. I think... I don't know. I'll think about it. <sighs> he's pondering as though he's searching for something to keep the conversation going. Well, guess what, Bernard? No one wants to talk to you. I'm just kidding. I take a few large sips from my beers. Okay. You find you may find this interesting. You may find this interesting. He starts. I'm working on something by Von Schutz. You know him? No. I think I've recovered <laughs> him once. I lie. He's okay. Isn't. Isn't that the most wonderful prose you've ever read? He bursts out. The way he builds those sentences. I could write that in a thousand lifetimes. A prose is, uh, I'm pretty sure, a poem with no rhyme or reason. Bernard, who's just taken a big sip of wine, chokes on his words and breaks out spluttering. Ew. I watch my friend with compassion. Bernard's a fil- a philis- a philis tid. But it's an act, mostly. I don't know why- I, I didn't get to read the rest of that line. Because I pressed the space bar before. The space bar button's very sensitive, okay? But it's an act, mostly. He sh he shaped his entire personality millimeter by millimeter in his room behind his writing desk. I can't wait till the boy's done coughing. It's just books, Bernard. Be careful now. 
He recovers, whispering. The beauty, William. That's it. I give anything for that. I could spend my entire life slaving away in that stupid clothing store, if only to catch a glimpse now and then of a magnificent play, the beauty of the female form, the rays of mo the morning sun. Yes, I guess. That's great, Bernard. I finished my glass, my glass of beer. You want some? I ask him, gesturing at the second. Let's see what he says. Have you ever been in love, William? Or have you ever experienced that divine feeling of wholeness when a naked girl embraces you? No, I have not, and I probably will never will because I am so sad. It's addictive, hiding underneath your skin, frying up the most unexpected of moments. Okay. Perhaps. Say on that matter, do you know Jasmine from the theater committee? I, do you know Jasmine from the theater committee? I ask with a smile just to see if I inf if elicit a response. Okay. Yeah, I know her. Not bad. Her father is Jershim Van Beren. I think he produced a few plays by Meher Hans. Meher Hans. You struck gold there, old boy. Okay. I just keep staring at him attentively. Okay. L look. You know my opinion on these matters. Look, you know my opinion on these matters. He continues. I'd say go for it. Do whatever it takes. Even if you have to lay down your life in the process. He pauses. Another beer, William? Then I'll have another glass of red. No thanks. I'm already one ahead of you, and I'll have a lecture to prepare. Okay? A lecture? Interesting. Interessante. So, do you guys have- So, have you guys arrived at the Von Kleist yet? I don't know what that is. This game is, like, so German that I don't understand. Bernard, I say. What image? I am so dumb. Why did I press the spacebar? I get up and put on my coat. As the town hall has been under renovation, it's draped in thick poly polyethylene sheeting. Polyethylene? On the pale December afternoon that covers the same light gray hue as the sky, camouflaging the building into a colossal chasm on the central square. Okay. A young man, tall, black hoodie and glasses, approaches me. Oh, it's this idiot. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Did he already do this? I stop him. Wait a minute. What's this? I ask. He halts and turns to face me. Oh, it's a flyer for one front. Oh, it's a flyer for one front. This is the Australian guy. With his right hand, he's holding a stack of pamphlets. His gruffy blonde hair protrudes from his head in irregular tufts. For some reason, he seems like the ideal target. Didn't I already do this part of the game? I'm so confused now. Okay. Um, ow. One front, I replied, grinning nervously. Tell me about all about them. Okay. Well, we stand for a national, uh, we stand for our national identity. He replies, you probably noticed that it's getting busier out here. We are under pressure from all sides. I already read this part. Are you serious? Okay, well, I just skipped that entire section, and I, and I just, I'm, I'm all of a sudden back in my room with the window. At 3 o'clock this afternoon, a lecture will commence, so I probably won't be appearing again. Through the window, I see dark rain clouds gathering. I feel a cold shiver about to rise up, but I manage to suppress it by rapidly brushing my bare feet over the low-pile carpet. Okay. I want I want to go to sleep, but I force myself to study for a bit, otherwise I'd be taking the easy way out. Yes, sleeping is the easy way out. I browse I browse through the books by the bed. On top of one of the stacks lies a work by Wilhelm von Schutz, which I quickly uh, borrowed at the at the library yesterday afternoon. Okay, Wilhelm Bernard's a terrible phony. Bernard's a terrible person. I open it up and start deciphering the old black letter typeface. I don't know what typeface is. Okay. Read excerpts in English translation. Read excerpts in original German text. Huh. If I'm brave, I'll pre I'll press the second one. But if I just wanna if I just wanna be English, I'll be English because I wanna be English. I don't understand any German at all. And even if I did understand any German, I'm not fluent in it. Each of us in the end must embrace the spirit of the universe from one or another side. Is he a philosopher? Then his dogmas will form the center point of his outlook as they correspond to the complexity of reality. Is he a poet? Then each vision of his imagination will bear the revelation of totality reborn. This is confusing, man. This is too big for me. It's it's a tough. It is tough matter. 19th century or something. I should actually be doing my coursework. I must have skipped six lectures by now. Formally, that's too much. But I know, prof. I know Professor Elfried likes me. I don't know who that is. Spirits of the second kind don't want to reach neither individually nor together. A clearer understanding of this than they are already familiar with 
while the former seek the absolute, they seek congruence. Man, I um, my brain, my brain is just too small for this, man. Congruence, congruence in what sense? I hope this doesn't linguistic treatise. I hope this isn't a linguistic treatise. I don't understand anything. They are satisfied as soon as individual lights mutually align themselves in a common congruence. Okay. That last part I read twice in a row. I like Elfried too. He's sharp and and she dresses nicely. And she's not as motherly as Professor Hoextra. Ho Hoextra. Everyone, like, everyone likes Hoextra better. Except for me. I don't trust her. Why, dude? The second way of treating that thought by hinting only at individual shared properties and often without care or provision and it enables him even more to unite with each and every phenomenon that he encounters okay with my concept my with my concentration my con with my concept with my concentration jeez to me way too long to read with my concentration waning I'm searching by my desk for a pack of gum, lifting up books, pushing up papers away, but it's nowhere to be found. Okay. Because we can grasp the peculiar more easy, and it, as far as it succeeds, disappears even more. What? My phone vibrates with a message from Lars. I jolt upright. Yes. Better. William. Rampage starts at 9 at Der Protest tonight. Proteus. Because we can grasp the peculiar more easy, and it, as far as it succeeds, disappears even more when it penetrates the mind deeply through extrapolation and comparison. Where it, Alfred, there's something in her voice as though she doesn't take me too seriously. Her figure highlighted beautiful, beautifully in those chiffon dresses she wears. For some reason, I can't enjoy them as much because we we can grasp. Because we can grasp. I pick up my phone again to send confirmation message to Lars. What? Because we can grasp the peculiar more easy. Another message. Okay. Don't come walking this time. <laughs> yeah, last time. Sorry, I'm moving a little bit. I'm just getting just getting a little bit more comfortable because I know I'm going to be here for a while. Yeah, the last time this guy walked, he um, did not have a good time. He had a bad time. And then Megalovania started p playing. Because we can grasp the peculiar more easy, and it, as far as it succeeds, disappears even more when it penetrates the mind deeply through extrapolation and comparison. I'm reading that again. You know what? That's enough studying for today. I close the book, crawl into bed, and take out my phone. 11.27. Uh, for me right now, it's actually 4.25. 4.20, no, 4.26 now. I should probably start attending lectures again, not this afternoon, but another day when Alfred's there. The Germans and their poets. Bunch of dickheads. All of them. I, well, I've never met a German person, so I could not say that for myself. I massage myself to sleep thinking about Jasmine. The bed warms up slowly. What? Okay, great. We're in the club again. This is the third time we've been in the club, and it's awesome. It's stuffy, as always, in Proteus. Lars walks in. Okay, what's up, Lars? He's super chill, dude. Bernard just called to say he's late. So he made it home safely Tuesday night, dude. Uh -huh. I was in bed before six, I replied dryly. Dry. And then you overslept for your classes? Haha, <laughs> go get us some beers, dude. It's okay. It's okay, I built a rep a reputation. I built up a reputation, I say with a smile as I leave for the bar. Okay. I do actually attend classes, just not all of them. It has to do with the with it has to do with to the way I take up information, but that's completely beyond Lars's compre comprehension. Yep, I would uh I would assume that too. Emmanuel Kant wouldn't leave his study for months on end. Never saw university from the inside, but he didn't do any worse over it. Okay, I have to fight my way to get to the bar, and as the lady pours two beers, I see, I. Can't believe I skipped that. It was a busy day at the administrative at the administrative at the administrative office. That's such a big word, man. Lars says. And as I return, next year's grant deadlines are coming up soon. And as always, those cobblers are sending their applications in last minute. Okay. What about the theater committee? I ask. Oh, they're on time as always. We might actually come across them tonight. Lars looks at me. What do you want? Got a crush on Miss Van Baron, don't you? There's a worried tone in his voice. Bernard told me, dude. Bernard told me, dude. I forgot to do the accent, the California accent. Maybe, I reply. 
Maybe. I don't I already forgot who Van Buren is. Maybe she maybe I t talked about her in the first episode. We're well, not the only one, he smiles. There's something about that girl that drives virtually every guy insane, dude. Okay. My stomach turns. That's gross. <laughs> what? In any case, don't expect too much from her. In any case, don't expect too much from her, dude. Lars continues more seriously. I'm not sure she's exactly your type, dude. What do you mean, I ask, annoyed. What do you mean, dude? Seriously. Stupid California accent. You don't even surf. Lar you're in Germany, dude. Lars makes a dismissive gesture, but I continue staring at him. I'm making a, dis a dismissive gesture right now, actually. Listen, William. Once in a while, you have to have this tendency to be a little too nice to girls, dude. What's wrong with that? I reply sharply. Sharp. Look, there's nothing wrong with that in itself. You'll probably even get away with it once or twice. What? But girls like Jasmine are different. They're used to that kind of treatment. You need to play it tight with them. You understand, dude? I don't. His words evoke unpleasant thoughts, leaving me with the notion that something was, was once very pure, now has been in irredeemably perverted. Okay. Anyway, they're planning to visit the NTA performance of the Bakke next semester. Lars continues. Just, I just greenlit their grant expensive, dude. Okay. That's, pr that's pretty serious, I mumble. That's pretty serious. You know, I had Bernard's triple would be, be staging something, too. About a porter, I think it was. Oh, yeah. Lars, we need someone to be the porter during Bernard's play or whatever. Oh, yeah, Lars. Is, oh, yeah, dude. Lars, is, Lars comments. I heard that, but I think there's something. There's some bad blood between Bernard and the theater committee. Something about professional standards, if I remember, dude. Wait a minute. Evelyn's calling, dude. Lars answered the phone. The reason it took me so long to say that is because I didn't know who was speaking. I'm about to take a sip from my beer. I, As I'm about to take a sip from my beer, I recall the soapy water clinging to the side of the glasses, and just in time, I placed the glass somewhere on the table behind me. Lars has a short conversation with Evelyn and hangs up on the phone. Okay. She's in the abyss. She, she's, she's in the abyss. Let's move over there. I'll text Bernard. Where's your beer, dude? Uh, oh, it's all gone. We can go. Okay. There's a chubby woman standing at the dance floor, chatting with a friend. A few guys are circling around them. Sorry, I hit my microphone. Like toothless sharks. And with de decrepit, decrepit faces from drinking too much dishwater. Is that what you call it? Let's, let's go, Lars. Calm down. I can't drink as fast as you, dude. Check it down, killer clown. <laughs> I've never heard that far. Maybe that's a German thing. I don't know. Okay. Whoa. The hum of the city is louder than usual. There are a lot of people on the move tonight. Okay. Mass migration, that's what I call it. You're dressed too thinly, Lars calls out. You're dressed too thinly, dude, Lars comes out, pointing at my jacket. It's gonna be cool, dude. Okay. Don't patronize me, Van Dyke. I don't- There's uh, there's so many, like, German terms in here that I don't- There's probably some, like, pop culture references that I don't get. Distractedly, I look upwards, where the canter- The cantenary- Wires off the trolley buses cross the sky. The wires of the trolley buses cross the sky. The buses of Bremersburg are like ma mari marionettes led through the city on wires. Okay. Suddenly, we hear a terrible sound coming in a direction. Useful brazen cries. With an unmistakable undertone of violence. It was a band of, a band of adolescents roaring loudly that come rushing around the corner. One of them catches my attention. He's short, stocky build. <laughs> broad chest and arms, some broad shoulders. Okay. And as he runs by, he pulls, out, he pulls open his mouth to shout something. Causing the contours of his dark red lips to stand out strikingly against the pale white cheeks. Okay. I stare after him until the whole group's disappeared from sight. Okay, that was strange. That's great, I- That's great. That's great, dude. I hear Lars mu mutter under- behind me. If they're heading for the abyss, we'll have to go someplace else. Okay, that was strange, to say the least. We pass through a heavy door and enter a small hallway that's filled with noise from the club. The doorman asks- the doorman asks us, for, asks us for an entrance fee, but Lars seems adamant to get in for nothing. 
That's nonsense. That's nonsense, he protests. It's a Thursday night, dude. Nothing wrong with Thursdays, the door. Nothing, nothing wrong with Thursdays, the dorm encounters. I'm sorry, boys. There's a party on tonight, and it's a full house. You can take it or leave. Okay, I don't know why I made him sound like a Homestar Runner character. I push past Lars and hand the man a 50. We each receive a black stamp on our hand featuring an obscure depiction of a simian. I don't know what a simian is. And one of those filthy stamps, too. And one of those filthy stamps, too. I hear Lars mumbling as we head towards the dance floor. Okay. Oh, yeah, dude. Heck, yeah, pump it up. We find Matt and Evelyn standing with a few people. I don't know. I don't even try to dance. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> we find Matt and Evelyn standing with a few people. I don't know. I try to dance. We keep bumping into the limbs of people around me, causing th their sweat to rub off of my shirt. That's gross. Next round's for you, Shweebin Hund. Lars ca Lars. The next round's for you, Shweebin Hund. Lars Kauza as he hands me a beer. Okay. The music's loud, and the longer I listen to it, the more I grow aware of the kind of primitive, mesmerizing cadence in the th in the thumping tones. Okay. I finish my beer and leave the group to get rid of my glass. There's a sea of people all in directions. Everyone looks the same in the crowd. The bare backs, the faces, the polo shirts. Okay. That's cool. And then, less than four meters away, I, I distinguish Jasmine's chestnut brown hair. She's facing my way, but doesn't seem to notice me. I move closer, and it turns out that she's standing with my friends. Why? Okay. Oh, that's Jasmine. You didn't, you didn't get us any beers? Lars, you didn't get us any beers, dude? Lars cal calls out at me. For me, too? Matt chimes in. <laughs> um, you know you can't dance with a beer in your hand, I reply, rolling my eyes. And you... Okay, and you're a despicable excuse for a human being. You know that? Matt shouts, shaking his head in feigned in indige indigenance. I guess. I look over at Jasmine's. Our eyes meet for a second, but then she turns away. I lean over Matt, who's standing close to me. How long has she been here? What? Who? Matt asks with a stupid expression on his face. Never mind. I call back a little softer. Matt looks at me like I'm crazy before turning his focus onto his pro on to his preposterous little dance. Okay. And Lars words keep bugging me. It's not like I place women on the pedestal. I'm just not a douchebag like Lars. Okay, but still I give it a try. Imagining that she's not that pretty after all. Okay. Strands of dry hair hang down her dull skinny cheeks. Whenever she speaks her face wrinkles up a little bit as if she's been drinking too much. Her nose? Did you like that yawn? <laughs> her nose, which seems so tender at first, protrudes distortedly beyond her far too short upper lip. Okay. I, the best way to not like a girl is to point out all the things that she has that's, that's bad. Suddenly, she lowers her gaze with her mouth closed. She's looking for something in her bag. Her proportions appear a little skewed. Yeah, she brings up. Oh, she brings out a packet of cigarettes, holds it up, and looks around the circle, smiling broadly. I smile back at her. She beckons me, and I follow her into the smoking room. The smoking room? Is that a room where they smoke, or is that like a cool room? It's working. The pungent smell of cigarette smoke permeates everything. It enters my lungs and fires me up, encouraging me. Jeez, are we gonna go to hell or something? Cause just look, look at my screen. It's all orange and red. I sit down next to her. Okay. Sub Jasmine. She's really pretty. Even though I can barely even see her face. So what are you majoring in? Right, wait, I have to give her a really high pitched voice. So what are you majoring in? She asks. I think I've seen you at the unit E. Okay. She hands me a cigarette. Her voice is so annoying, but we're just gonna have to deal with it, okay? Could be, I reply. I'm doing German lit. You're in the TC, right? You guys still have tickets for Beche? Yeah. <clears throat> I have to make sure my voice isn't correct. Yeah, sure. She responds disinterestedly. So, do you like going out? Without waiting for an answer, she reaches for my head and giggles. <laughs> You've got really nice hair, you know that? Uh, thanks. Uh, it's okay, I respond. Sorry, I've had a little much too- uh, Sorry, I've had a little too much to drink. She keeps playing with my hair. It's all a bit too lighthearted for me. 
I grab her hand. Sorry, my, my mouse. I grab her hand, move it away from my head, and smile. <laughs> yes, this is fun. I'm totally not talking to a drunk person. She comes in a bit closer, causing the fabric of her skirt to rub up against my fingers. Okay, I don't like where this is going at all. Thank thanks for coming along, she says. She says, geez. After we finish her cigarettes, everyone's quit smoking nowadays. Yeah, it's so sad. So have I. I laugh. Ha ha ha. So funny. I so have I. They're probably talking behind our backs right now. Probably. We're we're just smoking oh. bodies. She whispers. Okay. Okay. That's that's what what happened right now. We're turned to the dance floor. We're gonna pump it up. Okay. And the even as the evening passes, we stay very close together, getting each getting each other drinks and dancing to the music. I notice Lars looking at me now and the, now and again with an undetermined expression on his face. Okay, that's funny. At about 2 a.m., we head back to the smoking room. Oh no, oh no! You know this is not going to end well. Oh my god. Okay, you're still drunk. You want another drink? I ask. No, he don't need it. I put my arm around her. Oh no, oh no. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't want it. Want to head back to my place? She asks in a childish voice. She speaks in a childish voice already. Judge, well, by the way, I tell her. I get up and pull her along. Isn't she pulling me along because it's her place? I don't know. How would I know? I, I, this is a visual novel, so it's page by page. It's not live action. Outside, she suddenly unlocks her bicycle, her bare arms shivering in the midnight wind. Okay. You probably dressed thin thinly, both of us. You want my jacket, I ask? Stop being so nice. Uh... Okay. Maybe Lars was right. I'll tell you where to go. She says soft. I'll tell you where to go. She says softly. After her bicycle finally breaks free, she jumps on the back. Okay. As we ride through the streets of Bremersburg together, it feels like everything has built up to this one moment, as if something incomprehensibly large is about to unfold. I'm scared, guys. I'm scared. Something bad's gonna happen. A great time is commencing. Oh, no. I'm scared, guys. I don't wanna... Uh, I don't like where this is going. I don't like where this is going one bit at all. Okay. Bathroom's down the hall. Okay, good to know where the El Baño is. Um, she unbuttons her coat and throws it onto the double bed that stands in the middle of the room before disappearing into the kitchen. Her room overlooks a few more student buildings. A few windows still have lights burning. Okay. I'll get us some. I'll get us some water. She calls out from the kitchen. I'll get us some water. She calls out from the kitchen. I go and sit on the bed. Okay. I look around at the posture on the posters at the theater committee of the wall, at her bookcase, at all the stuff she's been doing. She's been away for quite a while now. Too long to just be to be just pouring water. Okay. I don't know what she's doing over there. And I try to imagine that I'm not waiting for her, that I'm only visiting, without reason, just to be here. But it doesn't work. Oh no. I'm groggy from all the beer. Uh uh and groggy. She returns without the water and takes place next to me in the bed. She's drunk. It's all very easy this way. I should have gone to the bathroom. <laughs> but she's too close now. Oh no. Her breath tastes of alcohol and tobacco. That's disgusting. That is terrifying. I would not want to be in the presence of someone whose breath is like that. At first second I ponder how many other boys she's done this with. Probably a lot. <laughs> Her cast off coat is rubbing up against my back. I try to push it away in vain. Okay, starting with my nose is itchy. It's just it's so itchy. In the corner of my eye, I can distinguish part of her face. My hand moves towards her chest. Her chest. Okay. Go ahead, she whispers in my ear. Go ahead, she whispers in my ear. And I pull on her blast buttons. But my right arm's cranking, cramping, and they won't give a, they won't give way. I wonder what she was doing in the kitchen for so long. I know, right? <laughs> it was. It's warm. I need the toilet. Okay. I can't get a grip on those buttons. Those dang buttons. Any plans for tonight? I ask her in an attempt to relieve the tension. You have the strange tension? Well, yeah. She answers demandingly, her eyes pressed onto tiny slits. Okay. Well, yeah. Like that. But it's dis but it's dissipated entirely. Okay. Now that now that we're in bed together, about to make love, I've grown painfully aware about what's unfolding here is actually the most mundane thing in the world. That's so sad. I'm I'm one in a series of thousands. My great time hasn't come yet. Maybe it's true. Jasmine's, Jasmine isn't my type of girl. Well, you had a lot of fun. It's hot and I need to urinate. 
Okay. Do you mean the room's hot or the situation? Either way, it's hot. <laughs> there we go, she mumbles, when she finally helps me undo her blouse. I forgot what a blouse is. But I pull my arm away. I need to go to the bathroom, I mutter inaudibly as I get up. She's staring after me, dumbstruck, but I don't even notice. I'm out of the room, down the stairs, away from the apartment complex. Okay. Oh, that was crazy. A tropical breeze is blowing through my hair. Onward now, without looking back. Yes. Good on you. Good on you, dude. Good on you. That's how a true man does it. Slowly, silently searching, a gray SUV glides down the street. Okay. As he overtakes me, I glance. I cast a glance through the window at the driver, who's in his 40s, eyes glued to his navigation system. Yes. Okay. Is that me? Is that supposed to be me? He slowed down. He slow. He slowed down to no more than a crawl. His exhaust fumes bringing tears to my eyes. Then he rolls open the window and strikes and sticks out his head. Why? Excuse me. Excuse me. You happen to know Westward Groove? He calls out in my direction. Uh, no. I feel an irrational urge to run, but I manage to suppress it. Okay. Westward Groove. I ask with an with a thoughtful face. Are you sure that can't be right? This is Ryberry. Maybe his navigation system is not the best, most reliable thing he could have used to navigate. It should be around here somewhere. Isn't it behind those houses? He points towards the cul-de-sac. Come on, sir. I've been living here for 19 years, I reply in mock indication. Okay, well, that was a very big waste of text. I do, he groans. It's just that it's not working very well. Okay. Without even thanking me, he rolls up his window and takes off. A minute later, he's disappeared from sight entirely. Okay, in this game, there seems to be a lot of things appearing and then disappearing out of sight. Just saying. A awkward cry escape my, escapes my mouth. My hands are trembling. I'm tense, exhilarated, but as I approach the liquor store, I also feel a very slight sensation of remorse. I try to forget about the poor man. He'll probably be driving around for quite a while longer. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I can imagine. They keep the expensive bottles near the front counter, the cheaper ones at the back. It conveys a subtle distrust towards the customer. But then again, alcoholics can be the easiest class of patients to entertain. Yeah, that makes sense too. Whoa, where are we? Where the hicker hacker are we? Can I help you? A sullen voice calls out as I pass the counter. Okay. I don't know who that guy is, but he's creeping me out. I'm just browsing. Wait, the person that said, can I help you? I need to give them a voice too. That. Uh, I'm going to give them this voice. Um, at the, at the, at the, there. I'm just gonna roll every single R they say. Can I help can I help you? I would like to be of assistance to you. Okay, there's still more R's in that sentence. That voice, I can sense it following me. I continue further into the store past the, sp the special offers until I'm out of reach. Okay. But it pursues, swirling around me, watching my every move. It has a suspicious demanding tone if it wants me out as quick as possible. That's creepy. Probably thinks I'm a shoplifter of some kind. That is not a good thing to be considered, I would say. Um, I think you can agree with me on that. Sentiment. I return to the front as calmly as possible, picking up one of the special offers and passing. A synthetic, domestically produced rum with a pi- uh, Sorry. A rum with a pirate ship printed on the label. I place it as an offering before the voice. This is disturbing. That's 1895. It hums audibly, appeased. Is it a gift? Yes, I reply nervously. Yes. Don't kill me. As it wraps the bottle in a shiny wrapping paper, I can't help but let out a silent chuckle. <laughs> me too. It isn't a gift after all, or perhaps a gift to myself. Yes, I guess so you consider that a gift to yourself. I exit the store with the finely wrapped bottle under my arm. As I walk home, it's as if I'm on my way to a birthday party. It's as if you're on your way t to a really sad birthday party for yourself, I guess. I don't know. 1848. It That's just great. Who's talking? I don't know who was talking. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. I love this music. A modern, brightly lit kitchen. She must be in her late 40s with a charming southern accent. With a southern accent? I don't know how to do a southern accent. H honey? Honey? Hey, honey? You're gonna get yourself situated. You, you better sit yourself down, honey. I don't know how to do that accent. Okay, I just I just gotta think of Joe from The Office. 
I uncork the bottle and bring it to my mouth, carefully pouring the liquid onto me until I break the flow. A tingling sensation gushes through my throat, strong at first, but diminishing, diminishing steadily until nothing remains but a fickle glow or flow, I think. Using my tongue, I rub the stinging fluid up against my mucus membranes and all along my gums. That is disgusting. I don't want to hear those details, please. As I swallow a jolt, everything's much sharper. Okay. A fat man with an annoying voice has come on. Der okay, I'd give him a, a wanker voice, like how Lazy Beam does, a wanker voice. Disappeared and 39. Would you like two balls? Are you sure? A room fills up with sharp applause. The ricochet that ricochets off my eardrums painfully. I scramble to find the remote. Okay. A woman is talking on the beach. She looks happy, but she's not overly pretty. The shot moves in on her face, and she smiles. Hmm, I wonder what she's so happy about. Maybe because she's at the beach. Involuntarily, I catch myself smiling, too. Then I unclench my jaw quickly. A wholesome voice recites an advertising slogan. Okay. It's as if nature's forcing me into m mediocrity. Mediocrity. Mediocrity? Hypocrisy? A numb, almost death-like state of being that dominates the history of our kind, save for a few scarce exceptions. Snap out of it! I can't actually snap my fingers, I wish I could. See? Snap out of it. It is nature's ma mantra. Mantra. Maybe I should snap out of it. The warm glow spreads out from my throat, through my esophagus, <laughs> into my stomach, and onwards from there to the rest of my body. The last daylight is shining through the window. The room's filled with the scent of rum, a cozy fragrance, with a hint of purifying ethanol. Isn't ethanol with an alcohol? I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It helps me to act normally, to act socially. It dilutes my talents, makes me as stupid as the rest. Okay? But there's nothing to it. But that's because that's not the real me doing those things. Yeah, it's the alcohol me. When I could come out as myself one day, with clear senses and a clear mind. I feel like this is a coming out story for this, bike, this guy being gay. Because remember, he was uh, looking at that guy who had broad shoulders, and he just kept looking at him. He look, kept looking at his mouth and stuff. I'm just joking, but that is, that is a good theory. You have to admit there's some solid evidence for that. He seems so confused, like, if he's gay, but he might not be gay. He's, he's probably not gay. There's been no talk of him being gay. And I mean, he was about to make love to Jasmine um, until he decided to quit. Um, aggressive tremors surging through my left thigh. I jump up. Okay, it's your phone. Spilling rum all over my mattress, and I take the phone from my pocket. It keeps on buzzing for minutes on end, but the thought of talking to another person sends violent spasms of anxiety through my nervous system. Me too. <laughs> I'm just joking. I toss it under my bed sheets, where the, mat where the mattress absorbs the vibrations and the blankets muffle the sound. I change the channel. Uh, I don't like the noise. You know, if there weren't any alcohol, I would have come up with something profound by now. But it thins the paint. Like turpentine, turpentine, so that only watery colors remain. Yeah, I guess. No deep reds or blacks, just safe, pasty pastels. And the pieces come out dull and inoffensive, like the stuff you hang in an office space. I know, right? Well, the office would like would uh, the office would disagree. It dumbs me down, makes me boring and gentle, like everyone else. This is so deep, man. Nobody paints with the deep blue of the ocean anymore. Okay. This is weird. Outside, it started raining again. Or maybe it's just my imagination. It doesn't really matter. Does it? 1848. That's great. <laughs> we already heard that, but what does that mean? It sounds funny, though. I'm awoken by a persistent itch. It consumes my entire body. That is really weird. For a while, I try to suppress the urge to scratch, but it keeps lingering p playfully at the edge of my conscience, occasionally sending sharp spikes of pain into my nervous system that makes me quiver in agony. Okay. I I'm sorry I'm laughing. It's just that the words, they're kind of funny to say. Too much to ignore. I scratch my skin furiously until I feel blood coming out. Then I crumble up my shirt into a ball and proceed to rub it over my irritated body until I'm numb all over. What the heck is happening? I rescue my phone from the bed linen, reassured to see the battery's dead. That's very reassuring. 
The floor is a carpet of empty beer cans, soaked in pale sunlight that filters through the window. Why? Why, though? And I know it's beautiful, in a naturalistic way, but I'm not the mood to I'm not in the mood to acknowledge it. I'm not in the mood either to acknowledge the beauty of the stool in the middle of my room. Later, when I look back, I probably realize how good this period has done for me. Or something banal like that. I don't know what banal is, but I'm not gonna search it up because I'm in the, I'm in my gaming mood right now. Even though I'm not really being a gamer right now, <laughs> but it's still a game, so I guess it technically counts. I turn on the TV where a man in a white shirt is discussing tort reform. That does not sound nice. The sound's muted. I change channels for a while and pass news bulletins and infomercials. Okay. There's always something off about daytime TV. Like how the programming's so much more brighter than at night. The overexposed studios and beaming hosts are all pale and oversaturated. Everything's so clean and light. Why can't anything be dark anymore? The heck? The TV just changed to a guy and it's so dark. I continue channel serving for a long time until I land on a program that offers my hungover eyes some rest. Okay, so it's like it's like dark mode, but it's too late. She enters again. Her hands, her cotton blouse. She's beautiful, like when I first saw her. Are you thinking about Jasmine? Just let her go, man. The more I think, the more I think of her, the more that comes along. I can hear that voice again. Matt's excited shouts, the dance music, the flashing lights. The interconnected, overpowering, rushing through my head, coming at me now that it's my weakest. Now that it's at my weakest. I want to isolate her from all the noise, to cut her out, and save her for myself, and save her for myself alone. But everything's so light, so out in the open. Sometimes it's better to hide things in darkness, to cast a light only on what's most important. As the tears fall, they draw a trail of fiery self-pity down my cheeks. I strike myself in the face. I turn off the TV. Is that what, what it meant? I turn off the TV and crawl under the covers. If I, if I go to sleep now, I might wake up and then it's dark again. That'll be cool. With a loud thud, the bottle hits the floor. Let the bottles hit the floor. Let the bottles hit the floor. And as I fall into a deep, long sleep, a bright beam of sunlight inches its way towards me. When the light reaches my chest, it submerges me in a pale white glow. Okay. The rustling of fields sounds softly in the distance. It's mild outside, like the first day of spring. A soothing breath of wind. On that day, balancing on the verge of consciousness, I cross a certain numerous, numerous, numinous border for the first time. This is strange. Whoa, it's a galaxy, or a nebula. Or a star system, or a galaxy cluster, or a star cluster, or the solar system. No, it's not the solar system. I'm miles away from my room in a library. The sun shining through a sky of scattered clouds that drift gently, bestowing upon rays of sunlight like a movement. Uh, the bestowing upon the rays of light of movement like falling grain. Okay, that's not clouds though. There's no one here. No people. No schedules. No libraries. And no stupid Russians in the libraries. In this state, I no longer act or rationalize. All I truly do is perceive. I've lost myself. Time is frozen. There's nothing here. Nothing but a light that shines with the gleam of flourishing wheat. A sensation. An embrace. The maternal warmth of a realm of golden grain. I feel something soft, like whiskers brushing up against my cheek. Okay, maybe you have a cat. I don't know. Maybe he had a cat that no one told him about. The world is regaining its hold for me. Or the world's regaining its hold for me. Yes. The dream evaporates. Her fragrance. The strands of chestnut hair. Slowly fade away. And now we're back in our room. As I, I awake, as from a coma, drenched sheets clinging to my body. In a frenzy, I feel around for a piece of dry fabric, fabric, but it's all wet, as if the linen has melted into a vivacious bog that's slowly pulling me under. Okay. Everything from the last days must have seeped into it. I write myself. The room's in a state of utter chaos. Bottleless. Bottles, clothes, library books are scattered amongst the rubbish. The books, they must have multiplied unnoticeably. <laughs> that's funny. No matter how many, no matter how many I return, no matter how much I pay in overdue fees, the numbers only rise. 
Okay, maybe you're just a big bookworm that never finishes books, which is not a very good thing to be, actually, and that I realize. And I'm looking for my phone just to see if the library is still open, even though I'm scared of the countless messages it must have collected over the week. I've been hiding in my room for days now, wallowing, loathing, watching TV. After salvaging a pair of striped boxes from the depths of my laundry basket, I sit for a while, sliding into the fabric gently through my fingers. Despite all the damp, the boxes have remained dry, and it comforts me for some reason. The beautiful dry cotton. I find my phone. You're always finding your phone. Twelve missed calls. The foggled up display reads. Quickly, I dismiss the notification. Yes. 12.33. Right now, it's 5.03 for me. Remember when it was like 4... 4.30-something? 4, 4.37, I think I said? Um, it's late. Everything's so calmy here. Clammy here. I need to move quickly. On my way to the door, I gather as many books as I can. And in passing, I grab a beer of nuts from the box under my desk. And as I traverse, the streets of Ryberry, I'm stuffing them. <laughs> At the handful, I can feel them drawing the liquid from my system. The hiss of an approaching bus shakes me from my thoughts. I sprint through the tunnel across the traffic island, signaling the bus driver to stop. Just in time, and as I pay the man, I want to thank him, profusely even, for waiting, but somehow I can't squeeze even the slightest sound out of my throat. Thank the bus driver, <laughs> like in Fortnite. Not much later, a message, from a message from Bernard comes in. Just in case you've crawled out of your bunker, it's 12 21 o'clock in the auto tonight. Uh, uh, I'm Bernard, and I'm so cool. Yeah, crawl out of your little bunker. So, guys, um, I uh, I know this is going to be a little bit shorter than the first episode, but I'm going to leave the episode off here. Um, and I'll probably finish the game in the next episode, or maybe the episode after that. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to leave this episode off here. Um, goodbye. Uh, I My channel is weird right now. Just it, just face it. My channel is so weird. Um, or not face it, but just... Just know that I know that my channel is in a very weird state right now. So just know that things are kind of scattered around, but things will get back to being at least relatively normal uh, eventually. So just just hold your horses and I'll get my act together. Um, it's currently, it's June 18th. I know I said I was going to get my act together in June and I kind of have, but not really at the same time. So I, th I guess it's going to conclude this episode of uh, The Right Time. It's a beautiful game, man. This game is so good. It's I know uh, there's so much stuff and it's kind of complicated and I don't really understand that much of it but I still it's still pretty fun. Um, so Soka videos you made a great or not Soka but Soka just your channel is called Soka videos but Soka you made a great game I just want you to know that. Um, so that's the end of this video. Enjoy the music and watch me smile.